What's up my YouTube family? Here we are at the Detroit Autorama 2022 and I'm going to show you all grade 8 cars. The first one here is a 1950 Oldsmobile 88. And believe it or not, this is a dark purple. I got to be honest, I'm not a fan of this car. But for you guys, I want you to be able to see it. Here's number two of the grade eight. It is a beautiful, beautiful 1970 Dodge Challenger. The orange stripe was painted first. They taped off the pinstripe for the orange stripe. And then they painted 12 coats of paint on the car to hide the orange. Because the orange stripe you see was literally about four inches big. They taped it off with pinstripe. And then they took the two colors, uh, the two different greens, mixed it together and put 12 coats of paint on here, clear coated it. Once it was clear coated, then they sand down the middle there. If you, I don't know if the camera's showing you, but that's a matte green of the exact same color. He said they sanded that down once to put in 12 coats of paint on and four coats of uh, clear coat, sanded it down, taped it up, and, and painted a matte clear on top of it to get that finish. What we have here is a 1936 Pontiac. Heavily modified and custom. You can see the owners out there shining it up. Beautiful matte gold wheels. Also have a matte gold grill that goes up the center of the hood. Beautiful headlights. The things just glisten. Get a closer look at the profile. And it's just a beautiful and amazing car. Uh, it's just amazing. He's actually got a video set up on this. Now, this how he here is painted the car. Exalter, uh, and that's the owner right paint. there. And the reason we use single stage paint is that we have the ability to give it a little more depth when it's all been cut and buffed. And our trade secret... I'm our next car is a 1951 Studebaker called Bertha. Check this thing out. It's a pickup truck that's been dropped, widened, and it's just sick. Let me get a closer look at the paint. It's almost like a... Burgundy. It's just beautiful. So if we look in the bed, come around to the back of it. Pretty much have Cadillac style lights tail lights but if you look inside the bed here that is not wood that is vinyl all of this is painted on actually no I took that back this is all metal painted to look like vinyl painted to look like real wood that wood pattern that's actually paint very nice all right let's go around to the front let you take a look at this beast from the front this thing is just amazing and it is also part of the great eight what is it? Grade 8. The engine looks like a LS model. I don't know which one. Everything's very cleverly hidden and concealed. We'll step back. Let you get a good look at it. Come around to the side. This is just a beautiful car. Our next grade eight contender is a 1970 Plymouth Scooter. This thing is very clean, but I gotta be honest, it's kind of basic. I'm quite sure some of you guys have seen this style of wheel on different cars before. Uh, I can't remember what car I've seen this on, but I've seen this design before. But it's extremely clean. Take a look at the inside. See the pistol grip shifter, so very nice. Custom made dash, center console seats, coming to the trunk.
the best part of the car is the engine. That is some crazy Mopar stuff. Looks to have the blower, fuel injection system, big block. Uh, the hood has been raised to accommodate. Let's look at it from the side. You can see how far that sticks up above the hood. And there's the hood, the modified hood. Let's see if we can get a better look from the other angle. A very clean car. Not a great car though, is it? No. 1933 Ford. All right, <clears throat> 1933 Ford. Um, not a big fan of this car. This body style has been around for so long and it's been done so many times, it's kind of getting boring to see it because you're limited to what you can do. You need to put a book, big block, a small block in it, do something with clean with the seats, but after that, there's nothing too fancy about this grade eight contender. All right, two more cars left. This one here is crazy. Look at that color. I don't know how well this is showing up on the video. We're going to take our time with this one. The display is nice. They got good mirrors underneath the car to display what the undercarriage looked like. I wish it was jacked up a little bit higher, but once we get to the other side, you'll see what they've done. They actually have a book here of how they built the car. It's a 1931 Chevy Custom. Now, one thing I want you to take a look at is that back wheel. You see how they did not complete the fender and they cut it out so you can see that if you look on the top. The color is epic. Um, the design is cool, but I'm not in love with it. This is actually my first time seeing the front of this thing. Ew. It's ugly. Turbochargers are in the front. Everything is very nicely done. Very clean, chromed. Um, you got the gold exhaust wraps on it, but it just kind of doesn't make sense to me. Um, actually, seeing it in the front, it really distracts from what this car looks like overall. Now over here, you can see where they took the wheels off. Kind of highlight the suspension, the brake caliber, the undercarriage. Okay. You can see the saddle brown color interior, the hood, the intake for the air. I don't know. This thing is just kind of weird now that I see it from the side. Seeing it from the front. All right. Let's see it with it off. And this is the last of the great eights. You people tell me what you think. <clears throat> this is a hand fabricated kit car, basically. Uh, there's over 6,000 hours of metal work to get this car to look the way that it looks. Um, it looks like a mix between a Shelby, blah, 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 the Shelby Cobra and the Shelby One and the Mach 5 cartoon car. Um, not a fan, but let's just get a closer look at it. Here's the front end of it. Uh, it's got a V8 engine. I don't know how, what too much about it because I'm really not that interested in it. But for you, my fans, I'm going to show you all of the great eights, which I have. What I'm also going to do now is take some time and go through some honorable mentions, cars that did not make the great eight, but I think it's clean. Plus, there's a car here that looks like Chip Foos Impressions, but I don't really think it's Chip Foos's Impressions, but it looks like it. I'm going to go to that one next. All right. Anybody that knows Chip Foos and they know the Impression car, you can see the resemblance of that car. Is this the Impression? No, I don't think so. I saw that car myself several years ago, and this is not it. At least I don't think it is. So let's just walk around here. Let's actually see what it is here. Oh, it's a 30, 37 Ford. No, this is not Impressions. Um, impressions had a V8 in the headlight. So in my eyes, this is a copycat. A 100% knockoff. And it's good for what it is, but 
because Chip Foose did it first, this is an embarrassment to my eyes. It's an honorable mention because it's a very nice, clean car, but after seeing Chip Foose version of this car called Impressions, this thing is a far cry from that type of quality that Chip put into that car. Look at the gaps. Look at the door gap in the front. Look at the gap on the hood uh, by the fender. And look at the, the gap in the back. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So the gap in the back compared to the gap in the front. The gap in the front is bigger. That gap in the hood, although in the video it looks pretty even, it's not. It's maybe one or two millimeters off. It's not a really tight fit. Let's go around to the back. You can see how the exhaust comes out the back. There's no back bumper. The headlights are recessed in with the chrome trim. And let's take some more honorable mint. This charger is one of those honorable mentions. The red headlights, that's kind of cool. It's got a great Hellcat engine. Anybody can do that. Everybody's doing that. But the body is really straight. It's in black. As you can see, it's been lower. The Craker style wheels. Very low, very clean, very straightforward. 68. Very clean on the inside. There's the owner standing next to it. RT. Good honorable mention. Next one. This next car is a 1963 Buick Riviera. Um, honorable mention because my wife loves the car and she said she would take this car as is. Wouldn't do anything other than sign the title, give her the keys, and she takes it driving. It's a very nice car, very clean. Um, I'm more a fan of the newer Riviera body style, but this is very clean, very nice. Uh, the engine looks like it's been beautified couple of parts but it might be the original engine maybe not it is a blue they have blue lights shining on it but the car is a really dark rich blue uh, really nice really clean uh, now from one of my favorites by the way while I'm walking over to my personal favorite that I would be a daily driver I want to send a shout out to CJ 32 dude I watch your videos I like them um, I think people need to subscribe to your channel and I hope they would do the same for me. So if you can, CJ, give me a shout out. All right, this is my, this is my favorite. The reason why I like it, not because it's over glamorous and flashing, it's a 69 Camaro. I'm a big, big fan of 69 Camaro. The way this car sits as is, I would take it and drive it and enjoy it. I wouldn't do anything else to this car. I wouldn't try to change the colors. I wouldn't put bigger tires on it or uh, change anything. I would take this car as is. Uh, it's got a little stereo system in the back. But this is very clean. Looking at the hood, it says LS3 IV3R. I don't know what the hell that means. Um, maybe that's a crate number. But just look at that. Very clean, very straightforward. I would have a lot of fun driving this. I love silver. So once again, if this car ever comes for sale and I have the money, I would buy this car. And I really would not care what it costs. Uh, yes, I would. I would pay up to sixty-five dollars to $73,000 for this car, as is. It's got a roll cage in it, beautiful seats and steering wheel, dash, this is just one of my favorite cars to drive and own. Another car that I <clears throat> like, I think this is a 63 or 64 Corvette. I hope it's a split window. Uh, it's a very nice car. I would drive this for a little bit and then sell it. It's got an LS7 Corvette engine. Pretty much straightforward and sane. And it is a 63 split window. Mm. Cool, 
beautiful. And once again, it's in my favorite color, silver. Here's another 58 Corvette. I like the body lines, I like the shape of it. Um, it's very clean, very presentable. Wow, and it might be twin turbocharge. Yeah, I see blow off valves, a custom intake plenum, intercooler. Yeah, this is a twin turbocharged V8 Corvette 1958. Mm. Wow. All right, next car. Okay, the only reason this is an honorable mention is not because it's a beautiful car, because of the color. That is the deepest, richest purple I have ever seen in my life. I don't care for that front bumper. Uh, it's too much for this car, but it's very clean. Everybody here puts a lot of time and effort into making these cars uh, look the way that they look. Uh, I want you to check out the interior. All right, take a look at that interior. I'll zoom in. I don't know what kind of leather that is, but man, is that one rugged looking interior. Cowboy satin saddle, I don't know, but that is just beautiful. Yeah, once again, looking at this car from the front, it's very, very, very ugly. It's cool in the way that they did it, in the way that they built it. Uh, I can see this in like Mad Max 23, the year before, cool. All right, uh, what year is this? 67 Mustang GT500? Try to do the Eleanor thing, which has been beat to death. The dark gray with the purple stripes, I'm sorry, I don't like the combination. Uh, the bodywork is clean, but lacks perfection. Look at the gap right there. I don't know if the video is showing it, but see here, right here. If you look at the hood towards the front, uh, the trunk, I'm sorry, it's actually raised up. It's not flat. So, you know, it's got a lot of imperfections, but on a scale of 1 to 10, I give it a 6 for effort. This car I'm about to show you guys now is from our friend Josh. Uh, Josh Hansen that lives in Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota. He built his own car and it looks like this uh, as far as the body style. Now, of course, Josh doesn't have all this detail because Josh is a simplicist. He wants the car to look cool and drive cool. He's not trying to be flashy with it, but um, he has a lot of attribute that matches Josh's car. So this part is for you, Josh, you know. You can see they got a V8 engine in the front, exhaust coming out the side, if that's real exhaust, I don't know uh, if that's real or not. Uh, custom built interior, I'm gonna get my finger out the picture. Uh, a weird steering wheel that's two thirds of the way, two thirds of it there and the other third is missing, okay. Um, the color, you can take it or leave it. But this is once again for my friend Josh in Minnesota. Honorable mention. Here's another personal favorite. For me, I love cars. I don't care if it's a Ford, Chevy, Dodge. I love cars. This is a beautiful car. It's very clean. They have the Ken Diggett handles on, on it. Um, it's very, very, very nice. Convertible, which I'm quite sure it took some time to build. Custom interior. Another view of it. Very nice. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's a 1962 Chevy Nova. Oh, shows you how much I knew. I thought this was a Ford Fairline. Wow. 62 Chevy Nova. Wow. Okay. Wow, 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 wow. Once again, another honorable mention. All right, guys, it's getting late. I'm going to edit this video and put it online as is. Please like and subscribe my channel. Uh, CJ, uh, keep what you're doing, brother. I, I'm impressed. Um, this is James Sims signing off from SEMA 2022. Uh, my prediction for the Riddler winner, 
I'm going to say it's the green truck, not green truck, the green car. Let me go back to that. These are the judges of the Riddler. They go around, as you see, he's underneath the car with a flashlight, and he's looking for any imperfection. There's one, two, three, four, five, six judges. So here's those two guys there. Those two guys there, the one guy's talking to the people, the guy standing in the front, and the guy that's laying on the floor. They're gonna go over these cars all night long and constantly reevaluate what they see. And they're looking for any flaws, any imperfections. Oh wow, there's another guy. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys looking at one car. So, wow. But the one that I think is gonna win the Whittler because they're probably coming back to this a second time to say, you know what, let's go back and revisit that truck. Because, you know, that could have been a contender. So that's what they're kind of doing right now is double checking things out. But I think this one here might be the winner. Uh, it's very clean, straightforward. It's got a beautiful body. You don't see too many of them like this. The second one, which I hope is not the Whittler, is the Maroon one called a uh, blowfish or something. I don't know what it's called, but let me just go take a closer look at it again. This car. The 31 Chevy. You know, from that point, it looks real good, but as you walk around this car, you start seeing things that make you go, why did they do that? Why does that hole in the top? Is that where the third brake light should have went or was going?